Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're looking at these two knives that came to us from CRKT. We have the Hoodwork Survival Knife and then the Cairn Hood Chopper over here. So I want to just basically put them up against one another and talk about the pluses and minuses of the two knives. So obviously a longer blade, more weight, shorter blade, less weight. This one has VEF serrations, this one is a plain edge. And uh, let's kind of work through them and test them out. We'll talk through some of the specs and then we'll put them through the paces and you can decide maybe which one of these will work for you if you're looking for a survival knife from CRKT. I'm taking a page out of the book from my man Brian over at Survival on Purpose. We're down here on the stump top. Let's talk through the two knives. So 1095 for both of the knives. You can see they have these hollowed out handles and that's to reduce weight. VEF serrations versus a plain edge. Now this is definitely a curved edge. It's not just a straight edge, but you definitely have the recurve here. So when it comes to sharpening these two knives in the field, you got some challenges on each one. I mean, if you have a... Um, a rod sharpening this one's not gonna be a major issue but the vexorations could be a little bit more challenging if you're not familiar with how to do them um, it shouldn't be a major issue but you know that's something you want to be comfortable with this one obviously has a powder coat up here this one you can see the two different tones in the uh, in the blade this is made in collaboration with tops and this is a sign of their heat treat process so this is gonna be a little bit softer up here and a little bit harder down there and in case you're worried soft doesn't mean it's soft and mushy it just means that it's the Rockwell hardness is gonna be lower for this and higher for that and so it's gonna offer you a little bit more flex but this is gonna keep an edge uh, a lot a lot longer just because of the uh, the hardness there so again VEF serrations that's something that some people like some people don't like we'll actually test that out and see you know for example making a feather stick are we gonna get better feathers because of the serrations I will tell you having handled both these knives I think the uh, jimping on both the knives is just too aggressive so I would tone that back if I did another round of these if I was CRKT um, I just don't think you need that much as far as um, it's just it's aggressive it actually beats your hand up if you press into it really hard with a set of gloves or if you're in a situation where there's a lot of dampness or moisture in the air you know you're by the ocean you're in a really um, humid environment then maybe those will help but in general for me I just don't find them as necessary uh, you could tone that back to probably you know a medium level of jimping or even for some people uh, no jimping is just fine and that would be fine for me as well Looking at the handles and the pommels here real quick, this one does come with the lanyard, so I attached it there. Um, this one did not come with any kind of lanyard. A lighter tone, um, a lightish gray, I guess I would say, with the black lines. This is more of a standard gray with some of those black lines. Both those pommels could be used for crushing or smashing if you wanted to break up, you know, acorns or something like that. So that's certainly um, an option when it comes to an additional kind of tool within the knife. Here's a quick look at the Hoodwork survival knife, end to end. I do like the look of the uh, the handles. I think that's pretty cool. Down to your lanyard hole and then coming back the other way here. And you can see it says hood work, Karen Hood Design, made in the USA, Hoods Woods. There's the rest of your handle and your lanyard. Here's a look at the chopper end to end. There's your CRKT logo, your handles. And then coming back the other way. And you can see my hand is all washed out here because of this uh, black powder coat. The camera has to adjust to this. Again, you see KHC, Karen Hood Design, made in USA, Hoods Woods. There's the rest of your handle and then your pommel. Here's a look at the two sheaths. Obviously the top one is ballistic nylon, the bottom one is leather. That leather one has a small pouch that you can put a sharpener in there. Uh, there's nothing in there right now. Um, the concept is for a sharpening stone, but you can certainly put a lighter or other um, outdoor wood survival items in there as well. The snap is secure, no issues whatsoever. Uh, the top one, the ballistic nylon, it does the job. I definitely think the leather one is nicer than the ballistic nylon, but you're saving some cost by having ballistic nylon. You can see the snap that goes over both the handles for the two different sheaths. It definitely holds the uh, the chopper and the knife in securely. And then I'll flip it over to the back so you can see what the back side of both sheaths looks like. The back side on the leather one, pretty basic. You can see your uh, your rivets coming through and you're just gonna run your belt through there. Uh, for the ballistic nylon, you do have some some uh, cordage, which is nice. You can use this to secure the um, the sheath uh, with the knife in it, you know, around your, uh, your quad or your, you know, your leg. Up here, you've got hook and loop. So you can run your belt right through there, or you could run this up like so, and then loop this together, and then run your belt basically up higher. So you can figure that out however you want to set it up. One thing I can tell you is that if you run it up higher like this, you definitely want to secure the bottom portion. I did that for a bit, and because this was moving around a bit, the, the bottom of the um, chopper was basically just swinging around more than I'd like. So if you do this type of setup, kind of a dangler system, I would definitely secure this bottom portion around my leg. 
Here's a look at the Hoodwork Survival Knife in the sheath and attached to my belt. Pretty basic, does the job. You want to unclip this, and then you can pull the knife out quickly and easily, place it back in, and secure the snap. Here's a look at the chopper and the sheath, and you can see I've got it secured up here, and then down here I've got the uh, cordage around my leg, and then taking it out, just unsnap and draw the knife out, slide it back in, and then snap it back in place. One thing I'd like to see CRKT do is use metal snaps instead of plastic snaps. These are functional, they do the job, I just don't think they're going to be nearly as durable. They did that on their tomahawk sheaths as well, um, just plastic snaps. They get the job done, but they're not going to last as long. And um, yeah, so CRKT, one recommendation for you, use metal snaps. I think that'll up the quality. Realizing it may up the price just slightly, but I think it's definitely worth it. So it's been raining a lot here in New Hampshire the last 24 hours and so pretty much everything's soaking wet. What I thought we'd do is put these knives through the paces of having to get to some of that inner dry wood of uh, you know some some branches, some logs around here and then we'll see if we can get a fire started. And honestly I don't even know if the spine is 90 degrees on either of these knives so we'll see if we can get a fire going. Uh, I do have a, a fire seal with me and um, yeah we're gonna give it a shot. So we'll see the pluses and minuses of the different sizes of these two uh, these two knives. Uh, built for survival and the outdoors by CRKT. What you're looking at here is a fire ring and some seats around the edge. This is where I did my lecture portion of a survival seminar I did last uh, November, I believe it was. So this is where we're going to make our fire. Let's uh, get to processing some firewood. On the ground here you can see a bunch of birch. That's my standard go-to for getting a, uh, a fire started off that fire steel. So we're going to grab some of the bark off this and then we'll take it back to the fire ring and basically process through it using the two different knives. As often happens when you're working with knives, sometimes you get yourself. So that knife right there bit me, so I had to bandage it up, but let's get back to work here. All right, so using this knife to scrape the outer portion of the birch bark. Simple to do. Uh, gotta be careful, obviously. But um, yeah, maneuverable, easy to handle. Getting some of those scrapings together gonna dump them right here for now just so you can see how much I got we can uh, this is definitely a, um, a knife that is easy to handle based on its size it's sharp you can see how I'm gripping it to get those scrapings and yeah so no problem there got the survival knife here and I'm kind of gripping it on the top similar grip I'm just gonna spin this around this way If I had a longer lanyard here, I could actually lash it around my arm and use it. And because there's not as sharp a point, this one is definitely going to uh, be a little bit more work. I can scrape and I'm getting a lot of this good dust that I can add to my pile. Got a portion of a down tree here, so we're gonna chop it off um, right about here and give us ourselves about four feet from here down off camera. And we'll try it with the chopper here and then we'll move to the survival knife and see how that works. As you can see, this, this thing's bouncing all over the place. I will tell you one thing right off the bat, I'm, I want to go like this to get more control, but that, again, that jipping is just too aggressive for me, so I'm kind of holding back here. If I had a lanyard, I'd lock it in and be a, have a little more freedom to swing this, but I always like to try it without the lanyard just to see what it's like, um, and then you know, in the future try the lanyard. So let's keep chopping here. Just leave that right there for a second. There it goes. So what I can tell you is that um, to be a hefty chopper, this thing just does not have the weight. Um, it'll it'll get the job done eventually. It just doesn't have the weight and the heft to really uh, to really dig in the way I'd like it to. Now this is pretty pretty hard wood right here, and I am sure this will do way better than the just the straight up survival knife. But to be a full fledged chopper, I'd want this to be longer and actually have it uh, have a little bit more weight so I could. Um, yeah, as I swing, the, the knife or the blade is actually 
doing the work. Now, again, to be fair to this thing, they call it a chopper. It's it's a very small chopper if it's a chopper. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't call this a machete, a parang, anything like that. But we did do some chopping here. It will get the job done, but it's definitely going to take more work than if you had an axe, definitely, but also a, a larger, heavier blade. Here's the Hoodwork Survival Knife, and I'm not expecting this to do a whole lot. Again, I'm not going to use the lanyard just for the sake of uh, just testing it without first, but... Yeah, I mean, this just is not going to get the job done for something this... You're talking probably, what, uh, three inches across, maybe three and a half inches? So, it's just not... It's just not designed for that. Even just to give it the benefit of the doubt, I'll put the lanyard on and swing. Definitely easier, but still not, not going to be a great option for, for any big chopping tasks. So I'm going to finish this um, up with the chopper, get through a little bit more, and then just put my weight on it, and that'll break it, and then we'll go back and work on some batoning. I took that branch down and then chopped these two pieces, and uh, this... CRKT survival survival chopper, I guess we're calling it now, or chopper. Uh, it definitely did the work. Uh, again, it's it's pretty lightweight, so you're gonna have to swing a little bit harder. Um, I would have taken probably their burler axe over this to have to chop through wood, but it uh, it did get the job done. We'll do some batoning now, and we'll first start off with the uh, chopper and see how this one does, and then we'll work over to the survival knife. Definitely an oversized baton here. It is making it happen. Here, I'll use this other log that we're going to baton with or baton in a minute. Yeah, so this thing, the chopper is definitely getting an A right now on batoning. That was. As you can see, since the blade on the Hoodwork Survival Knife is notably smaller, it's going to be more work for this one. But let's see how it goes. Still gets the job done, though. Both the survival knife and the chopper did well batoning. Um, the chopper did better. It's larger. It's a thicker blade. So um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't totally surprised in there, but nonetheless, the uh, the hoodwork survival knife definitely did work to do some of that batoning. Okay, now we're going to move on to getting a uh, couple feather sticks, and we're going to get a fire started. So I'm just using the plain edge portion of the blade right now, and then we'll try a little bit with the VEF serrations in a minute. Certainly doing it just fine with the plain edge. Let's move up to the serrations a little bit. Yeah, so they definitely cut in. They want to dig into the wood, which feel it feels like they want to dig into the wood more than I want them to. So the plain edge portion definitely, I feel like I have more control over it. And even when the little curls fall off, as long as they don't fall on the soaking wet ground, they're still usable. So we are getting some feathers. Spin it around the other side. Maybe down here. So 
So not as fine as the uh, survival knife, but definitely still doing it. I tried both these guys with the ferro rod, the chopper, absolutely not, um, nothing, no spark whatsoever. I tried the spine, I tried uh, kind of the backside of the finger guard the, in the choil type area there. I tried the um, pommel, nothing. With the, um, with the survival knife, I can get a spark if I work hard enough up toward the tip of the knife. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We do have our fire going, it took a while. So just because that wood was baton doesn't mean it was totally, totally dry. So uh, we do have it up and going now. And you probably noticed that at the last minute I switched around and used just one strike, but I used the blade of the Hoodwork Survival Knife to get that fire going. It just, um, I didn't feel comfortable with the spine or the tip because I was getting so close to the tip. I was afraid A, my hand might slip and I might cut myself or B, something might snap. So I just turned it over, did it one strike with the uh, spine or with the blade hit the birch dust, got that going, and here's our fire now. When I started shooting this video, it was probably about 74 degrees, uh, overcast, a little bit of a breeze coming off the pond. Right now, it's probably 85 plus, very humid, no breeze, sunny, so I'm just totally sweating here. Anyhow, nice fire I have going if I need to purify water, but definitely not for heat. Some reflections on this knife, lightweight, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the jimping or the VEF serrations. I just don't think you need the VEF serrations on this, uh, on this knife. If you're cutting tons of vines or other cordage, then maybe you want it. But for me, I just wouldn't want the uh, VEF serrations if I had my way. Um, but it was easy to use. It is lightweight. Uh, I did find that I wasn't able to hold it like this really much at all because those are just too aggressive. So I was holding it like this the entire time and, and it worked well. Obviously for batoning, this one's not going to be nearly as effective as the chopper, uh, but it, it definitely got the, uh, get the job done. I like the sheath. I like the way it rides a little bit higher on my hip as opposed to the chopper. Um, now, all that said, I'm gonna take up, pick up the chopper. I don't dislike this. I just like the hood work survival knife more. Um, this is still quite manageable uh, for even as big as it is. It's not a chopper in the classic sense of it doesn't have the weight, at least for me, uh, what I would consider a classic chopper. So this is more like a big, maybe an oversized knife. Uh, for me, when I think about like a knife that is big like this, that's still manageable, I think like of the Rat 7 from Ontario Knife Company. So that one is large, but I feel like I can still manage it. And I feel like the same thing with this. Good ergonomics, good ergonomics as far as how it feels in hand. Um, that little, you can see the bend in the handle, how that kind of drops down. Um, but I don't like the fact that I can't get a spark off the spine at all. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see the spine is a little beat up there for me trying. I mean, I tried the whole thing. I tried on the jimping. I tried here in the finger guard. Tried off the, um, the pommel. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. So I'd like to have something that um, I can strike a, a, a spark off a ferro rod from the spine here. But if you still like the knife a lot, then certainly you can get it and then just make sure you have another option for striking. And you can use the blade. I have done that. It's definitely not something I would want to do on a regular basis. But you saw in this video, one strike and I'm done. Um, 
It's not gonna kill your blade if you do that once in a very rare while, but I wouldn't wanna use a, a blade on my ferro rod as a regular approach to how I'm gonna get fires started. One thing I hear about both these knives, the chopper and the um, and this Hoodwork survival knife, is people say they're so expensive. Like, why would I spend so much money? Well, CRKT every year, uh, and every few years, I guess I would even say, depending on what uh, model or what line they're going with, they put out more expensive knives because there is a market for them. Every once in a while, they put on a knife. Uh, the Hoodwork came out a handful of years ago, and some people bought it because they like the style, they like the um, how, it, how it functions, they like CRKT, they like Karen Hood's designs, so they go with it. So you've got to make the call if a knife like this and the investment, the money you're going to spend in it is worthwhile for you or if you want to spend something, uh, spend less on, uh, on a knife. That's obviously something that in each individual is going to choose. If you like CRKT but you want something that's uh, less expensive, they do have other fixed blades that are definitely worth checking out. Thanks as always for checking out the videos. This was fun to make. Uh, kind of put myself through the challenge of trying to get a fire going when it's really wet out. And uh, hopefully you know more about the CRKT survival knife and the CRKT chopper as well. And you can decide if they fit into your system or your kit uh, when it comes to getting out into the woods. I want to give a big shout out to CRKT for helping make this video possible. And as always, more videos coming soon. Take care.